friends, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to Squintillions. In March 2020, I had an idea for an experiment to try with real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. I wanted to test out how a selection of REITs in the stock market would perform compared to the REITs in my Fundrise account. My plan for this idea was laid out in my video, REITs, Fundrise E-REITs versus REITs in E-Trade, which you may want to watch before this one if you haven't already seen it. Today, I'm going to update what has been going on in these two accounts since I made my previous update in August 2020. I am not going to go into too much detail on the individual REITs themselves, as you can find more information online if you are interested. I'll stick to updating you on the changes to my investments. Let's start with the E-Trade account. In mid-September, I noticed that the price of some of my REITs was dropping a little. I took the opportunity to buy two more shares of WP Carry, ticker WPC, at $66.83. WP Carry is a net lease REIT that invests in high quality, single tenant industrial, warehouse, office, retail, and self storage properties in both the United States and Europe. The other REIT I added to was Health Peak Properties ticker P-E-A-K. They own and develop real estate in the healthcare industry in the areas of life science, senior housing, and medical offices. I bought three shares of Peak at $27.10 each. The total amount of those investments was $214.95. Moving from E-Trade to Fundrise. When I bought those REITs in September, I deposited $215 in my Fundrise account. I put $100 directly into the Income E-REIT, which has 13 active projects. I let Fundrise decide how to allocate the remaining $115. This was split into $75.91 in the Growth E-REIT 2, $17.21 in Income E-REIT 5, and another $21.88 in the Income E-REIT. Something interesting happened in my E-Trade account in December. Apartment Investment and Management Company, ticker AIV, separated its businesses, creating two distinct publicly traded companies. Apartment Income REIT Corp, which would trade under the ticker AIRC, and AIMCO, which would continue trading under AIV. AIMCO continues with developing and redeveloping apartment communities and focuses on investments across the U.S. multifamily real estate sector. Meanwhile, AIRC retains the mature, income-producing real estate assets. As part of the separation, there was a reverse stock split of one share retained for every 1.23821 shares of AIV originally held. AIV holders also received a special dividend payment. Then, holders of AIV received one AIRC share for every one share of AIV common stock held, and cash payments were made for any fractional shares that were owned. This sounds sort of complicated, but thankfully the brokerage handles it all for the shareholders. This has left me with five shares invested in AIV and five in AIRC. This company reorganization had the effect of making AIV look like its share price had dropped dramatically as the price switched from trading in the low 40s to between $4 and $5. You'll see this reflected in my E-Trade account in a couple minutes when I show you the account holdings and the total gain for AIV looks like negative 89.62%. Don't be daunted by that. AIRC started trading on the New York Stock Exchange around $38. So when adding the share prices of the two businesses back together, the combined price was actually pretty stable. When I was doing my tax loss harvesting for my E-Trade account at the end of December, I sold 3.55812 shares of Brookfield Property REIT, ticker BPYU, at $15.37 per share for a total of $54.68, which I left in my account as cash. The share price for BPYU notched up the following week as Brookfield Asset Management released a statement in which it announced a proposal to consolidate the company and buy limited partnership units of BPY. The statement goes on to say, and I'm quoting directly here, Brookfield is not proposing to acquire other securities of BPY and its subsidiaries. However, it is expected that holders of the Class A stock of BPYU would receive the same per share consideration as BPY unit holders under the proposal upon exchange of their shares into BPY units. It is also expected that the BPY 6.375% Series A cumulative redeemable preferred stock 
would be redeemed at its par value of $25 per share in connection with the proposed transaction. Nothing for shareholders to do currently as this is a proposal, but the announcement did affect trading prices of both BPY and BPYU. We will wait and see what happens with that. I find it interesting that one of my REITs has reorganized to split into two and that another one is considering consolidating. In January, I felt it was time to again add to my REIT investments. So first, I transferred $400 into my E-Trade account. I ended up buying shares in the same positions that I had in September. I bought two more shares of Peak, this time at $28.25 each. I bought two more shares of WPC at $66.10 per share. Now for an exciting announcement. I decided it was time to add a new REIT position to my portfolio. I felt like it was time to add another retail focused REIT to the mix and chose National Retail Properties Inc ticker NNN opening a position with four shares at $38.60 each. Those three purchases totaled $343.10. With the remaining cash in my account I placed a limit order on another REIT which has not filled yet. I'm not going to mention the name of that one as I put in a low priced limit order and I might still change my mind on it. All of the REITs in my E-Trade portfolio have paid a dividend since my previous update, and those dividends have been reinvested back into each REIT. Here's the promised view of the REITs in my E-Trade account as of Saturday, January 16th, 2021. On that day, my E-Trade account had a total value of $2,433.50. To make this comparison experiment as fair as possible, since I added $400 to my E-Trade account, I also needed to add $400 to Fundrise in January. I split this deposit so that I put $100 in the Income E-REIT and $100 in the Growth E-REIT. For the other half of the money, I let Fundrise decide on the investment choices. Another $11.08 went into the Growth E-REIT. $33.34 went into a new fund for me, Balanced E-REIT 2. And the final $155.58 was funneled into Fundrise's brand new Interval Fund. Let's talk about this new fund. At the end of December, investors received information about the new Fundrise Real Estate Interval Fund. I will quote some of the major ideas from the press release. The two key takeaways are that the new Fundrise Real Estate Interval Fund is to become a flagship fund aiming to provide investors with greater diversification, lower overall costs, and improved access to liquidity. New investments will be allocated to the Interval Fund based upon an investor's account level and plan type as we saw happen when I added funds to my account in January. Some other important points Fundrise explains are that the fund has a balanced investment objective seeking to generate current income along with long-term capital appreciation. The interval fund has a target initial offering of $1 billion with no cap on its total offering capacity. This means the interval fund is capable of holding more assets than their other funds, which should translate to greater overall diversification with a single investment. The interval fund will offer quarterly liquidity in the form of quarterly repurchase offers with zero penalty or cost associated with liquidating interval fund shares. The interval fund has daily net asset value or NAV pricing with the purchase price and repurchase price for shares adjusting to match the fund's NAV. Some other items to note, the interval fund will have the same 0.85% annual asset management fee as their other funds. It will have quarterly dividend distributions and follow the dividend reinvestment preference investors have for their portfolios. Investors will be able to track the performance of the fund and get regular updates on property acquisitions, improvements, and operations. Finally, the fund will be treated as a real estate investment trust for tax purposes and investors will receive a 1099 DIV annually. That's some great news for the future of Fundrise, and I believe these changes could help bring new investors to the platform who might have held off before, either from the liquidity issue or a diversification standpoint. If you aren't invested in Fundrise and would like to get started, I have a link in the description below which would allow both of us to have 90 days worth of advisory fees waived. 
Let's check in on the value of my Fundrise account as of Saturday, January 16th, 2021. Here's a quick look at my top holdings of Fundrise right now with over half of my investment in four funds, Growth E-REIT 2, Income E-REIT 2, Income E-REIT, and the East Coast E-REIT. Those are all funds that I have made additional individual deposits into in the past. The total amount invested in my Fundrise account was $2,272.50. That means that my E-Trade account with the REITs I have personally selected takes the lead in the experiment with E-Trade up by $160.93 over my Fundrise account. If you are looking for short-term quick gains, you are not going to find it easily in REITs. If you're looking for a way to diversify your portfolio and earn steady solid dividends to supplement your income, you might consider investing in REITs or Fundrise for the long term. Please do your own research and consider your personal circumstances, financial goals, risk tolerance, and timeline before committing to any investment. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button. Click subscribe if you would like to see more content on personal finance and personal growth here on Squintillions.